New Zealand, they used brains and brawn to break out of their supermax. I mean, they really were sort of, you know, criminal masterminds. Auckland, New Zealand, 1998. Nestled behind endless stretches of razor wire is the foreboding Paramorimo prison, nicknamed Parry by the guards and inmates. It's an unusual place. It's got its own culture. Even for a police officer, there is uh, the hairs stand up on the back of your neck every time you walk into that place. Parry Prison is New Zealand's only maximum security facility, housing all its worst offenders, including four dangerous felons who were desperate to escape. 22-year-old convicted murderer, Graham William Burton, serving life. He's known as a very, very hard man uh, and someone that's um, really wasn't being mixed with, uh, messed with even in, in prison. 41-year-old Arthur Taylor, a career criminal with a genius IQ, racking up 130 convictions over three decades. Taylor had only spent five of his adult years out of prison. He's what you would describe as a high-profile New Zealand criminal. Uh, he does enjoy the limelight. Uh, he's an intelligent and, and extremely industrious uh, person. 21-year-old Darren Crowley, serving life for killing a young man at a New Year's Eve party. And 18-year-old Matthew Solomon Thompson, a vicious bank robber serving 11 years for a violent armed robbery crime spree. We considered him and the others to be an extremely high risk. So we believe them to be very violent people who like to use firearms, who had the propensity to use them uh, and were quite ruthless. Locked up together, the gang of four began searching for a way to bust out. In March 1998, they stumbled across a broken perspex window in the shower block. It led directly to the prison yard. The space was just big enough for an arm. They reached through to work out how the bars on the other side were attached and realised with the right tools, both windows and bars could be removed. They found a crack in Paramorimo's defences. Somehow they managed to get a, a hacksaw blade into prison and it was basically a, a period of weeks where um, you know, they took turns at night sawing through a shower block. After smuggling in some spanners, their escape kit is complete. Just smuggling some of those things into prison would have, would have been hard enough in itself. And I mean, they really were sort of you know, criminal masterminds. Over a three week period, the gang take turns to saw quietly through the perspex window. As they cut, they conceal the gap by filling it with soap. And finally, the window pane is cut through completely. June the 18th, the four are ready to make their move. They really only had one shot at if, if um, any of them had have been caught. I mean, that would have been, a, you know, that would have you know, been a massive sort of clamp down on security even more of that prison. After dinner, prisoners have recreation time until the 7 p.m. head count. The gang make their move. They remove the perspex pane they've so carefully sewn through and start working on the nuts holding the bars in. But after an hour and a half, and with only five minutes to go before the 7 p.m. head count, the bars are still intact. The gang is forced to hurriedly replace the perspex and head back inside, leaving their handiwork in plain sight. But the window bars are not their only problem. I'd be very surprised if these four have gone to this much effort without first arranging some outside assistance. An associate is cutting through the perimeter fence from the outside. Now, with a getaway car parked out the front, a hole in the fence and the shower block bars still intact, this escape looks doomed. Even a cursory inspection by the guards will destroy four months of planning. Paramarimo Prison, Auckland, New Zealand. The country's only maximum security penitentiary, where four tough inmates, convicted killer Graham Burton, career criminal Arthur Taylor, murderer Darren Crowley, and bank robber Matthew Thompson 
have become unlikely allies in their bid to escape. But they had to abandon their attempt to go back inside for a head count, leaving a getaway car, a hole in the perimeter fence and a sewn window in clear view. With the head count over and time running out, the gang rushed back to the shower block, desperate to finish the job. The last nuts are unscrewed and the bars are finally removed. Dropping silently to the ground, the gang race to the hole in the fence. They crawl through and run for the stashed getaway vehicle and disappear into the night. Prisoners, when, when they're in prison, thinking about escaping, they'll just say, Parry, you can't escape from Parry, but these guys clearly proved that you could. And just 10 minutes later, inside the prison at the 745 head count, their absence is discovered. It was a, a top priority for the New Zealand police to track them down before they hurt anybody. When the police dogs find discarded prison clothes, roadblocks are set up with a three mile radius around the prison. Police say the four men could be the most dangerous group ever to have escaped from our prisons. Police are assuming the men are armed. I think there was a fair bit of terror in the area, especially in Primary, with the fact that you know some of these guys who have escaped were very dangerous people. But the armed and dangerous escapees have slipped through the net, and police fear the worst. Tairua, New Zealand, 1998. Four dangerous criminals, two of them murderers, have been partying up in a vacant beachside mansion. As the armed defenders squad surround the building, they're confronted by tripwires and a bomb. After closer examination, the booby trap is found to be a fake. We were able to uh, make the area safe and then enter the house with our armed defenders squad. Once police got into the house, they found it empty, but discovered guns were missing from the owner's collection. The escapees have bought themselves valuable time and used it to disappear out of the back door into nearby bush. But now police know they can't be far away. More reinforcements are called in from Auckland. A chopper with heat-seeking technology scours nearby forest. It was crazy. It was, yeah, it was like apocalypse an hour in the Coromandel. That night, the chopper pinpoints the four escapees and their house guest huddled together in the bush. The next morning, ground forces move in. Outsmarted by technology and surrounded by armed police, Taylor, the crook with a mental level IQ, gives himself up. Handcuffed and in custody, Arthur Taylor's week on the run is over. He was plucked from the bush by armed police just after breakfast, wearing only a flimsy jersey as protection against the cold. Like sort of magic, he walked out of the bush, um, wearing clothes that he had stolen from uh, one of the one of the houses that they've broken into, um, unshaven. And, uh, yeah, just wanted to give himself up. He had enough. Joanne Hewitson is also taken into custody, but the other three are still on the loose, and Taylor has a message for them. Oh, sorry, Matty, Darren. Just, no, we're good. So they haven't shot me, as the information we received, they were going to do it, um, so I don't do anything stupid for us. A career criminal with a fondness for the limelight, Taylor also calls in to a current affairs show. What are they planning now? Oh, they'll hold out to the last. We knew that if it come to a, you know, a shootout, that they'd definitely get us. Police continue their manhunt, preparing for a shootout. We can't discount the fact that the outstanding people may well be uh, better equipped or better clothed than what Taylor was. I'm hoping they're buggered, I'm hoping they're tired and they just think that they've had enough and let's, let's give the game away, but we can't discount the possibility that they feel they're in there for the long run. A week after the escape, following a tip-off, Authorities surround another holiday house, north of Tairua. They believe the armed and dangerous Burton, Crowley and Thompson are inside. At 9pm, the armed defenders squad storms the house. I'm very pleased to report to you is that the three escaped prisoners from Perimura Prison have all been apprehended. <laughs> The jailbreak came to an end at this batch north of Tairua with a deadly survival kit. In that pack is a loaded um, shotgun. It's been sawn off. There's also a number of knives. There's maps. There's food items. 
Two more rifles were found under the house, which is owned by a German couple who use it as a holiday home. The house had to say they were surprised was an understatement. The method used to enter that address was such that uh, there was no possibility of them resisting. Caught off guard, New Zealand's most wanted surrender without a single shot being fired. It was very satisfying to have them back behind bars because of the threat that they posed to the New Zealand public. We did not want them being in a position where they would harm anyone or take a hostage to continue with their freedom. I love my mum and my family. I don't mean to cause them all this trouble. The recapture of the fearsome foursome cost New Zealand taxpayers three quarters of a million dollars. Burton, Thompson and Crowley faced seven charges in relation to the escape. Taylor faced six. They each received another three years prison time.